Hi, welcome or welcome back to the Black Spruce Fiber Knitting Podcast. My name's Allie. Um, I'm here with my dog. Sorry. I'm here with my dog, Darwin. Um, <laughs> we live in the Green Mountains of Vermont on Abenaki land with my partner, Chris. Um, and it's a rainy, cool day in November. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I've been working on. I only have kind of a few things to talk about, but I'm excited to talk about them. So thank you so much for joining me and spending a little bit of time. Um, yeah, so my first finish, finished, finished object is what I'm wearing and I'll put in some footage. Um, this is my Morcella cardigan by Whitney Hayward and I love it. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I knit this in Farmer's Daughter Fibers Juicy DK in the colorway Namu, um, which is a superwash um, DK weight yarn. I'm pretty sure that I used the suggested needle si uh, size. Um, I will be honest with you, I knit most of this last winter, and then I put it down for a while because there were other projects that I was excited about, and then the summer I picked it up and I knit the button band, um, and then I put it down, and then this week I put on the pockets and the buttons. And so now it's done, and I'm so happy that I finished it because I love it. So it's a bottom-up pattern, and you knit it in this, um, I think it's called cartridge stitch, and you don't purl when you do this stitch. Um, you are making these ridges by slipping stitches, and I really liked that. It was a ton of knitting, but I found it to be really soothing. I felt like I would just pull this out when I was watching TV last winter. Um, that was like, you know, when the pandemic was really um, raging, like we really couldn't leave our houses. And so it was perfect and I was just going back and forth. Um, so you knit it bottom up, you decrease, seam the shoulders, knit the arms, and then add the button band um, and then add the pockets. So there's a lot of steps. Um, but I really liked knitting it. I don't know why I didn't finish it till now. Um, but yeah, I knit the pattern almost exactly as written. The only thing I changed is that I didn't decrease as much for the wrists. Originally, I decreased the way that it was specified in the pattern, and I found that the cuffs were too small. Um, and I, so I knit the size, I think I knit the size 46 or that's about 46. I'm about a 41 and a half inch bust, so four-ish inches of positive ease. Um, and I, um, which is less than it was suggested, I blocked it kind of aggressively to open up the stitch. And it feels like it's more than, I haven't measured it, but it feels like it's more than four inches of positive ease. And it's a really nice, relaxed fit. It feels very like, country style. I feel like I could wear this with a lot of outfits. Um, but I think because I maybe did a size that was smaller than suggested, that's why the wrists were too small. So I had to rip back, but I fixed it. Um, and it's totally fine. Um, so yeah, I, it's been blocked. Um, I love this yarn. I'm going to try to give you a close up. <laughs> It's this really beautiful, like, burgundy color with these kind of, like, shocks of purple. And it's just gorgeous. I actually have a whole skein left. And um, I don't remember exactly how many skeins I used, but I have a whole skein untouched, which will either go to, for another project, maybe hat or mittens. Um, it's 247 yards. I could definitely, I think you could do a hat. Um, or maybe it would be color work, good for color work, or I'll trade it with someone or give it away or something, but have a whole skein left. And it's a really gorgeous superwash DK. Um, I'm starting to knit with less superwash yarn because where I live, I find that I wear um, non-superwash sweaters more because they're warmer um, and I often really need like my knit pieces for warmth in the winter um, so this isn't going to be as warm that's kind of the only downside of this sweater but I still imagine that I'm going to wear it like all the time um, I think it's great for work <laughs> which is nice um, I don't have that many outfits for work um, I'm a therapist and it feels very like therapisty. Um, 
and yeah it's you know I think that the color is just beautiful um I think that it's very neat and tidy I'm really proud of this piece I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say Farmer's Daughter Fiber makes awesome yarn. I had their advent calendar last year. I would really suggest checking them out. It's definitely more expensive. This was a splurge purchase last year, um, but I'm really glad that I have this piece and I hope I have it for a really long time because um, I love it. I've only knit one other cardigan and it doesn't have buttons and it's a beautiful cardigan, um, but I really like this one with the buttons. Um, I tend to wear pullovers more and I like knitting in the round um, I've never steeped anything. That might be a project for the future. So all in all, the Mortella cardigan, Whitney Hayward, knit in Farmer's Daughter Fibers, Juicy DK. Love it. So happy with this project. Um, yeah, I have like no complaints, except that it took me a year to knit and I don't know why. <laughs> um, that's more about me though. I think it's a well-written pattern and yeah. You, if you want to knit it, I would suggest trying the cartridge stitch in a swatch to see if you like it with the slip stitches, because it might not be for everyone. And I know that some people on their Ravelry pages said that it felt like tedious to them. It didn't feel tedious to me. So you can see if you like it. Um, yeah, because I think it's a really nice staple piece. So that's my first finished object. This one went really well. <laughs> Second finished object had some issues. Not with the pattern, the pattern's a great pattern with me. I will, I will explain. So this is my fort sweater, which is by Jared Flood and I knit it for my partner, Chris. And you can see that it's done in a stitch, which is similar to moss stitch or seed stitch, lots of pearls. Um, this is a checkerboard stitch. So it's like knitting and purling. Um, and I knit this in Quince Co Lark. And I've mentioned before that I bought two sweater quantities of Lark when Firefly Fibers was um, getting rid of their stock. There were some questions about the business. I don't want to comment on that. I think you should look it up and make your own decision. Um, but they were, they had it on sale because they were selling all of theirs. So I bought two sweater quantities um, to sort of help out the store. Um, and it's a non-superwash worsted weight wool. It's, I mean, I don't want to say too much about it, but it's actually, it's a really nice wool. Um, I really enjoy knitting in it. It's very round and bouncy. Um, I think it's, I really like the color. Um, yeah, it's a nice wool. And this pattern is by Jared Flood, who is the person behind Brooklyn Tweed. And it's a beautiful pattern. I've said also, I think, that I think Jared Flood does beautiful masculine um, sweaters and masculine clothing like with great silhouettes. So this is knit bottom up. Um, you knit the sleeves separately. I knit them two at a time. And then you seam the shoulders, seam in the sleeves, and then add the neckline. And there's some beautiful shoulder shaping. I mean the details on this pattern, I, I'm happy with the finished result. But I had a couple issues knitting it. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you about them. Um, it was a good learning experience. The first issue that I had knitting this is that I didn't enjoy knitting it. Um, and I knew when Chris picked this pattern that I wouldn't enjoy it and I said yes anyways, so that's on me. Because, um, excuse me, um, this stitch is a lot of purling. And um, I don't mind purling, especially not for ribbing, but for doing purling all over the piece, it's a lot. And because it's sort of like seed stitch or moss stitch and you're offsetting the knits and the purls on different rows, I feel like I had to pay a lot of attention to whether I was knitting or purling. And so what that kind of resulted in was that I felt like I couldn't just zone out knitting this. Um, you know, it's not just like stockinette or even like just a rib. I feel like I could kind of zone out a little more because I'm not like, okay, did I do two rows of knits or two, like, where am I? but it's not as engaging as like color worker cables where I'm, it's more challenging and thought provoking, but I'm engaged because I like to see what's developing. And so it was neither engaging to knit nor was it like soothing and meditative. Um, so I didn't enjoy that, <laughs> but I was really determined to finish it because um, I wanted to make a nice sweater for Chris. And I was like, this is like a perfect sweater design for Chris to wear. And 
and I'll put in some footage of Chris wearing it. I think it looks great. <laughs> um, but I didn't enjoy knitting it. So that was one thing that happened. The second thing is that I ran out of yarn. Um, you can see it's a folded over collar and whoop, there's an end that is apparently not woven in, but um, it's a folded over collar and I ran out of yarn. Um, and so I used this. This is a different color of Quince & Co. This was the other sweater quantity that I ordered and I have enough of this for another sweater. I have extra of this. Um, it's gonna be a sweater for my dad. So I felt fine using a little bit. And I was like stressing out when I was finishing it and realizing that I was gonna run out of yarn. Um, and I was thinking, okay, like if I do the folded over cuff, I can do the inside a different color, which was funny because I was watching Emily Curtis 108 Stitches podcast. She does a podcast about knitting and baseball, which I love because I love baseball. Go Red Sox. Um, but, and she had done the same thing like while I was thinking about it, which I was like, okay, so that's gonna work. But I actually had to rip out my swatch um, to knit the neckline. And so I ripped it out, wound it into a skein on my Nitty Naughty, put it in water, dried it, relaxed it. So everything took a little longer. Um, if you undo yarn, I would really suggest winding it into a skein. You don't need a special tool. You can do it on like the back of a chair, um, although it's a little harder. And then you can put it in just warm water for a little bit. Don't move it around. Um, but for non superwash wool, all of those little like kinks will just relax right out. Um, but so I had to basically reclaim the swatch, which is a second reason why it's good. It's not good to knit swatches just for sizes, but also because it like gives you a little extra wool if you run out like I did. So I had enough, but it was close and I was stressed. <laughs> and I think the reason for that is that I knit a size medium. This was on mostly size six needles, which was a size down um, because I knit a swatch and I had to get gauge. Um, and I think I had ordered yarn thinking I was going to knit a size small. I ordered this yarn back in like March or something. Um, and I think it, I had thought I was going to do a size small, but then Chris and I were talking and we decided that maybe like a little bit more ease would be better for like a looser fit, which looks really good. Um, I haven't blocked this yet and I'm hoping it doesn't grow too much when I block it because right now it fits perfectly, but we'll cross that bridge. If it grows a little, I think it's going to be okay. Um, and non-superwash wool tends to not grow as much. But so, ran out of yarn, which has like never happened. I usually order extra yarn um, and have leftovers for scrappy projects. Um, but so I was stressed out when I was finishing this and it was like late at night. Do you see something? So it was like late at night and I was finishing this. I was sick of knitting the pattern. I. <laughs> what I like finished all of the pieces and I asked Chris to try on. So this is the third thing that happened. And this was the mistake that I made. It was kind of a big mistake. I had Chris try on, I clipped together the shoulders and I had Chris try on the body just to make sure that it fit. And I think that I didn't notice that when taking it off, Chris turned it inside out because I sewed the, the sleeves on to the inside out body. And I didn't realize it for a while. And then when I realized what I had done, and I mattress stitched, I felt a deep pain in my heart. <laughs> I wanted to cry. I had a moment of being like, I'm never going to knit again. And then that passed, but I'm going to, here, I'm gonna show you what that means. It's not the worst. Um, I'll show you what it means and then I'll talk a little bit more about like my thought process about it. So it's only really noticeable in two places. I don't know how I didn't notice this while I was sewing the sleeves on. It wasn't until afterwards when I was weaving in ends and I was like, why are all the ends on the outside instead of the inside? But the side detail has this um, ribbing that is supposed to have five knit, knit um, knits and four pearls, but because this is inside out, it is four knits and five pearls. <laughs> so you can see it there and that's not that noticeable. That feels fine. But what is bothering me more is that at the edge of this pattern, there is, when you, when you switch from the ribbing to the main pattern, there's a row that's just knit stitch. And so now there's a row because it's inside out. It's supposed to look like this. 
but it looks, there's a row of pearls. And you might be thinking, okay, that's really not that much. I think because I didn't enjoy knitting this, I really wanted it to be perfect. Um, I'm usually a process knitter and this was like a product knit. And so I was like, I wanted the product to be perfect. And I felt so brokenhearted about it. It like took me a minute to really think about and I want to say, this doesn't hurt anyone. <laughs> um, I have had hard things in my life, probably like everyone in the world, um, and lots of sad things too. I recognize that this isn't a big deal, but I was so disappointed and frustrated and sad. And I knew that if I tried to undo the seams that I would get really frustrated and that I wouldn't be able to finish this. So I was like, I'm just gonna make peace. Um, and see what I can learn from this. And I think I learned a couple things. One is that like, it's okay to just be disappointed sometimes and to just feel sad. Um, I just like let myself feel that. I feel better now. Another thing is that I need to make sure that I'm only knitting things that I'm really enjoying because if I'm feeling stressed out by the knit, the whole process is not as fun <laughs> for me. Um, and I really take responsibility. It's a great pattern. It's not a hard pattern. Um, it's well written, but for me, it wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted. Um, and I'm really glad that I finished. Um, I'm glad that Chris can wear this now. Chris is like, I don't care about that line of pearls. I would never have noticed if you hadn't said anything. And I feel like, I feel fine. You know, I think it's like, it's, it's just like an, it's just was sort of another experience at the end of the day, but what a mistake to make. <laughs> I will say Chris was trying it on after I finished, finished last night. And we also noticed, I haven't blocked it. So I don't know if this will block out. There's kind of a weird patch on the front, like right here. That's a little faded. And we're like, what happened? Um, my suspicion is that Darwin was like lying on it <laughs> um maybe but it doesn't he likes to lie on knitwear so I don't really know what that's about but there's like a weird little patch um but you know with this it's like it just need I just need to move on um and think about what I want to knit in the future and what's going to be like enjoyable for me to knit and also realize that like it's okay to embrace feeling disappointed it's okay to I don't know have like a lot of experiences one of my friends messaged me on Instagram and was like you know it's handmade and it's like yeah it's handmade so this knit was kind of a process um I would not make this again <laughs> Um, that's just my personal feeling. I'm glad that the product looks nice and that it fits Chris and that Chris is going to wear it. Um, but holy moly, not my favorite piece. I really wish I liked knitting it because it would be fun to do one of these in another color. Hmm. But, but that's just, you know. That's just it. My knits either need to be really soothing and really meditative or very engaging color work cables or both, but in different parts. Um, this, oops, where is it? This yarn, so this yarn is gonna be a sweater from my father and he picked a pattern that is a lot of stock in it. I think it'll be totally fine. I'm gonna knit a swatch for it soon um, after I finish my test knit. This is kind of, one of the next sweaters that's on my needles um, that's, that I'm planning to have on my needles. Originally, I was going to do it for myself, but I'm enjoying knitting for other people these days. So, yes, that's what's coming up. I have a lot of skeins of this. I actually ordered extra. That was part of the worry about not having enough yarn was that I was like, I don't, I can't get more from that store because they're sold out of this color. Um, I don't know. I will never find the same dye lot like and I also don't know if I want to buy more so and I was like if I ripped back to save some yarn I would have to like rip a ton out it just whew. so 
Yeah, I don't know. Knitting is supposed to be stress relieving, not the opposite. So this one, I think I was also trying to finish it <laughs> because I really wanted to work on a test knit that I was accepted to. I think I started to like give myself a little bit of carpal tunnel because I was like, I'm a thrower. I'm not, I don't knit continental. So switching between knit and purl was like an extra motion for me. I was like, okay, it's done. So those were my two finished objects and then I only have one work in progress because I'm knitting monogamously on this test knit until it's done, probably. So this test knit, I was originally going to knit it in this Malabrigo Arroyo, which I had purchased. I really, I spent a long time looking for a yarn. So this is the Styria sweater for Rachel Ramo picture. Um, I spent a long time looking for yarn and I settled on this because I thought that a superwash would look nice in this. You know, I was like, it probably won't be as warm of a garment, but that's, it's, maybe it'll be like more of like a transitional piece or a layering piece. But when I got home and was reading about this yarn, I realized that it is not actually really DK, it's sport slash DK, it's kind of thin. And I was like, well, I'm gonna try to make it work. And I knit a swash with this adjusted needle size, which is six. And to get gauge, I had to block it very aggressively and I didn't like the fabric. And if I went up a size, I was like, I know that this fabric will be too like loose for me. I tend to like a denser fabric. And I also wasn't really enjoying knitting with the yarn. It was feeling like a little bit squeaky. <laughs> um, it's a soft yarn. Um, I think that I might like it worked up at a denser gauge with like smaller needles. So I decided to go and get a different yarn because I was like, I need to enjoy this. If I don't enjoy knitting this, I'm not gonna make the deadline. Um, so I went to another knitting store. I went to so many. I was like looking, I was almost late for work. <laughs> um, and eventually I found this yarn. And the woman at the store really recommended it. It's called Erin Moore Light. It's from the fiber company. And the colorway is Kieran. And I'm not gonna lie, when I picked it up, I thought this was black tweed, but it's definitely like a chocolatey brown, which I also like. I thought it was like a warm black. I don't know what I was thinking. I was maybe kind of rushing. Um, but I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this a try. I have three skeins of this. Um, I think they were like $27 US a skein. You know, um, again, maybe more expensive. But so this is a mix of fine merino wool cashmere and silk and it's like a kind of irish inspired yarn um and all of it's like named after ireland it's made in ireland that's so cool chris is irish i'm not but so i made a swatch in this and i blocked it and i got gauge really easily and the fabric was still a little light, but I feel like because this is non-superwash and it feels like it's a woolen spun, I think it's gonna fluff up more. And the woman who was working in the store, she had the cutest dog. I really liked her dog. I'll put a picture of the dog right here who came and said hello. Um, um, she told me that she had knit a sample for the floor, but that it wasn't on the floor because she was wearing it so much. And I was like, that's what I'm looking for. It's just a sweater that I wanna wear all the time. Um, and I just noticed that like my really woolly sweaters, I pull on a lot because they keep me warm when I'm outside. Um, so I got this and you know, I was like, it's gonna make the pattern look different. It's gonna be like kind of a more rustic take on this pattern. And I was like, well, maybe that's okay as a test knitter. Um, Cause it's maybe it's helpful to have people knitting the pattern different ways so that if you're looking at it, you can see like, oh, this is an, op an option. So I've started this now that I'm done with the fort. And this is all I have. Actually, it's not that bad. Um, it's got this like little split hem. It's written to be kind of like a high-low hem, but I wrote to Rachel and she said it was fine to, to modify it to be an even hem as long as I kept track of the yardage. And I think I'm gonna knit mine as the cropped version. And I am just enjoying, so you can see it's kind of a looser fabric, but I think I think it's gonna block and kind of fluff up a little but I'm just really enjoying knitting this I think it's gonna fly the deadline's December 1st I feel 
pretty confident that I can make the deadline. Um, and yeah, it's really cute. It's another bottom up, which is interesting. I've been knitting a lot of bottom up sweaters. Um, I like kind of prefer top down, but it's just been what's happening. And you know, this is my first ever test knit and I've been feeling really excited about test knitting. So I really want to do a great job. I'm trying to take great notes. Um, and I want to make a nice, I want to make like a nice piece and get some like really nice photos of it. Um, my Ravelry and my Instagram will be linked. I don't update them enough. I'm trying to update them more often. I'm trying to put more of my projects on Ravelry. Not all my projects are up there right now. I'm trying to photograph things. Um, I'm working on getting better at documenting because I know that it's really helpful for designers um, and for other bidders as well. Um, so this is like a wide rib with this like nice, here, I'll make sure that you can see, with this nice garter stitch edge. And yeah, I actually love how it's working up in this rustic tweedy wool, this chocolate brown with all these different color tweed bits. Like, there you go. I think it's a really like um, lovely look and I think it's gonna look nice and foresty, which is always what I go for. I think it's gonna be like a really cute, um, sort of like woodsy pullover. It's got a great V-neck. Um, yeah, it just has nice details, but it's not, it's not like a lot to think about. It's not super complicated. This is like great um, soothing knitting for me. I'm enjoying knitting it. That's what's important. Um, and I really am loving knitting it in this yarn and feeling like I made the right choice. I'm knitting the 45 inch, which should be three and a half, four inches of ease. Originally I was going to knit the smaller one because I wasn't sure if I should do closer to my bust size, but I know that I also really like garments that have a little bit of ease. So I went up a size and I'm hoping that um, it's a nice fit. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm excited for this pattern. Um, I'm hoping that next time I shoot an episode, I will be able to show you the finished pattern um, or the finished garment. So this will be monogamous. I actually have some yarn that I bought from the designer of this last year since she also dyes yarn. That's um, Hanukkah themed, because she's, sorry, there was a fly. <laughs> um, she's Jewish, which I love, because um, I'm Jewish too, and I don't always see Hanukkah themed things. And I have an idea, which is that I want to try to knit a whole pair of socks during Hanukkah, which is eight nights long, and starts on November 28th. So I'd like to finish this ideally a couple days early so that I can start those socks. Um, I have so many patterns that I wanna do before 2022. Um, the socks, the, I have a cowl that I wanna knit with hand spun, the sweater for my dad. Um, I did wanna knit my brother a pair of socks. Um, I want to knit Chris a pair of socks. I want to finish that scrappy sweater. So I have a lot kind of coming coming down the pipeline. Um, I probably won't finish all of those by 2022. I've also been dreaming of like cabled, white cabled sweaters with baubles, like um, the Willa Cardigan by Sari Nordlund or um, what's it called? Maybe Morel by, um, Fiber tails. Those I'm like I don't know why, but I feel like in deep winter, some of those would be really nice to knit. Um, I don't have any new acquisitions this week. Uh, I did just order some Newton yarn because I had a hard week and I was like I really want this, so I ordered a sweater quantity of Newton yarn, which is an unspun yarn. If you haven't heard from it, it's very special. I've never knit with it before, but it's made in Sweden. So when that comes, I'm definitely going to show you. I'm really excited. Um, but I don't have any acquisitions this week. I did finally fix my spinning wheel. I just needed to wood glue it. Um, so I'm going to be spinning some more in the coming weeks, but you know, we're approaching the dark time of year, which is when I really love to knit. 
um, when there's not as much sunlight and when it's cold. Um, I, it snowed a little, but it hasn't stuck yet. Um, and I love winter so much. Um, my birthday's in January and I just feel like, I don't know, I think winter, especially in places where it gets cold, can be really special. Um, there's a herbalist that I really like that Chris has studied with whose name is Brittany Wood Nickerson and she writes a lot about how like winter is a time of rest and healing and I love that. Um, and so I'm feeling excited about like warm cozy knits for the darker months and we've already been making fires and um, it's just so lovely. So yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything else like life stuff that's exciting to talk about, but not really. We're just kind of settling into the season, um, going for walks. We did a little bit of a mountain hike the other day, which was really nice. Um, getting ready, getting the gardens ready for winter. Um, you can actually see we have more beds, but those are two of our beds. Um, and there are carrots in there that I'm gonna try to overwinter. Um, when you grow carrots in the ground, they can actually stay in the ground all winter and they get sweeter. Um, usually in the past, overwintering carrots has not gone so well for me because I feel like something always eats them by the time I get to them. <laughs> but I'm hoping that these carrots are delicious and that we'll have them able to eat like in the early spring when the ground thaws. We also planted a ton of garlic. Garlic is something that you plant in like right before it freezes. Um, and then it also stays in the ground all winter and then you harvest it the following July. Um, but next year we're also going to dig a really big garden. So felt good about getting some stuff out of those beds. Um, yeah, and I think, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to sit around and make garden plans. I think that that's going to be my New Year's Day activity is going to be sitting around and thinking about all the vegetables that I want to grow next year. Chris is kind of handling like the more like um, like shrubs and like uh, Chris put in some elderberries and that type of thing. And I'm gonna probably do more vegetables and then we'll do herbs and flowers together. Um, but Chris will do like nuts, maybe mushrooms. Um, we have a lot of plans and I'm excited. Yeah, so I don't know, I'm feeling really good these days, even with this um, challenging, <laughs> frustrating project um oh yeah I don't know I I'm feeling really grateful right now for this space and for people watching and tuning in if you're still watching thank you so much honestly um it means so much to me um if you are thinking about starting a podcast I would really recommend it it's just like it's really fun and it's exciting and it's fun to share projects and connect with people. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully this was fun for you to watch and you enjoyed it and got to work on a project or anything else. Um, yeah, and I love hearing from you if you have any thoughts or feel like sharing what you've been working on or what you do to get ready for the winter. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, I would love to hear. And yeah, take care. I hope you have a wonderful day. Hi, welcome or welcome back to the Black Spruce. Oh my gosh. What? Oh my goodness. You wanna come here, Pip? Okay. Hi. Oh, okay. I live in, oh my goodness. What are you growling at? In the Green Mountains of Vermont on Abenaki land with my partner, Chris, and our dog, Darwin. Um, today I'm joined by my friend Audrey's dog Pip, <laughs> um, who is giving me a free shower. Um, and yeah, this is where I talk about knitting and sometimes other things. Thank you so much for watching. Um, it's <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs>